Hey, so this is part two. I probably should have this camera on a stand. Um, don't know why I'm I'm speaking kind of low. You know, I got neighbors, <laughs> but I think you all can still hear me. Um, and because it's such a, a serious um, discussion and topic, I got this little glare thing going, so I'm gonna take these off. So here I am with part two of why um, casual sex is killing us, right? Um, mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally. And for some of us, financially, right? <laughs> Hook up with the wrong or the right person, right? Have you paying for that thing? Women paying for it, men paying for it, whatever. Y'all know I'm funny, but I just finished praying um, because I wanted you all to know how serious I am about this topic. But let's see which way to go. <laughs> so many... Um, thoughts probably should have written it all down um i forgot how i was gonna start this off y'all i'm tripping thanks for tuning in though by the way but um it's a lot of people who are just they're tired they're fed up they're confused and i guess it's really more so women you know that i've talked to about it and if I can just be transparent tonight, um, lately I've been kind of finding out in this year that it, me continuing to express <coughs> my desire uh, to be married and, you know, start a family over the age of 40 is actually running some men my age away. <laughs> I can only deliver this in the Dr. Ray way, but... Um, and I'm like telling them, well, I wish you would have told me two or three years ago uh, because then I wouldn't even consider you a candidate, right? Like, we can just be friends, you know? Um, if you just wanted some sex, you could have just told me that, right? <laughs> well, this one guy, he did tell me, um, you know, initially when we started hanging out that he at the time you know didn't want to be in a relationship and so you know we we would go out on dates you know and but uh it was like when i you know when you sleep with someone that's when it starts getting kind of like you get that attachment you get confused you know women i'm not a scientist i'm not a minister i'm a preacher but if it's the lord's will that's another discussion though because i used to say that's what i wanted so <clears throat> Don't ever tell God what you want, you know, because it's going to happen, right? <laughs> if it's his will, right? Anyway, so um, it was like after our first date, and we had already been friends for several years, but um, we, you know, actually went on uh, out on a date, and we had a long talk, and he was just saying how, like, you know, he didn't want to, you know, be in a commitment. So then, like, by the time we went on the second date, we you know we we hooked up <laughs> and so time went on and we just kept having fun dating going out going out enjoying each other's company and everything and then i started being like so you know what are we you know but it's kind of like it's hard to backtrack because he looking at me like a woman i told you on the first date you know that i wasn't looking to be committed at this time in my life so you gotta respect a man when he's when he's honest with you now there have been times where, you know, I'm so focused on what it is that I want. Like, I want to be with you. I want to be with this person. So, you know, I put all my energy into one person. Now I'm talking about somebody different because he was honest with me to a certain extent. But I just, you know, kept kept myself attached because it was what I wanted, Right. And he's like, I've been honest with you because basically he had just gotten out of a relationship and he felt like, you know, I'm not in a good position to seriously date you or anybody. Like, I'm working on myself, you know. And when we come out of those relationships, we have residue, you know, from the past and hurt, you know, just trauma from a relationship that didn't didn't work out and then i have my own trauma from past relationships right that didn't work out 
And so, but I just kept trying, you know, I wanted the friendship to be more than what it was. I wanted that commitment because I felt like I put a lot into it. You know, he put a lot into it as well. Time, energy, money, you know, going out. You know, th this is a part of your investment, right? It's like, what are we doing? We, we're we putting a little bit too much time and communication and energy in for this to not be a serious relationship, right? So out of everything that I just, these two stories I just kind of told you a little bit about, I ain't say nothing about God. <laughs> I didn't say I prayed. I didn't say I asked God nothing, right? And sometimes that's where we go wrong, you know? Uh, we we not putting God in the middle of it, right? We doing what we want to do. But we say we a believer. We say we praying, asking God to send, send your wife, send your husband. But then we still dating and doing things the way we want to do it, not the way God is telling us in the word. Now, I got some scriptures to back up today's message but um and it's so funny i remember when i had my first workshop <coughs> on god's design for singles uh we still need to get that part two together i'm pointing at my friend bishop <laughs> and he just got engaged and shout out to you and there's some scriptures in here and some things that i do want my pastor friend to clear up give us some clarity on because it's like okay like this one scripture I'm getting ready to read to you all. And I'm sure that some of you are familiar. And this is 1 Corinthians um, chapter 6, starting at verse 9. And this is the uh, ESV version. Well, it says, and this is Paul writing. And everybody's like, you know, Paul, he was just, uh, you know, he was, he was ruthless with it, right? Okay. But anyway, it says, or do... I, I should probably turn this light on so I can see. Or just my glasses. Oh, this was another thing. I'm in my bedroom because the topic that we're talking about is so intimate, right? Like a lot happens in a lot happens in the bedroom. The freaky stuff, right? The sleep time, the night time, the prayer time. I mean, you you can pray anywhere, but I know I do a lot of my praying. Here and right here at the foot of my bed, right? Going out when I need to get really get to God, get down on my knees, right? But anyway, that's another topic. So I'm in my bedroom and we're talking about sex. <laughs> um, so it says here, or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, and nor revilers, nor swindlers, swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God. And so who is Paul talking to? Who is he writing to? He's writing to the church. He's writing to Christians. He's writing to believers. Because they didn't, it wasn't Christians back then, right? We were believers, right? And so not, none of us is exempt. And that's really what I want to ask my pastor's friends, pastor friends, because it's like, okay, because I haven't been to the you know, seminary, studied nothing, been ordained nothing, right? But okay, so it says neither the, it says that they will not inherit the kingdom of God. So I'm like, well, what's the, what is the kingdom of God? Well, we know that this kingdom of the world is belongs to Satan, right? <clears throat> so a lot of things that we do, we participate in, you know, the sex outside of marriage, the being a drunkard, whatever, are worldly things, right? And so a lot of this, we it's, it's a lot of mixing, you know, going on. I'm, I'm hell on wheels during the week and then on Sunday, right? I know how to dress up, go to church. Could have just came from the club, you know, the, the night before, whatever, drunk. And I, I mean, I'm speaking from experience, right? Right? Um. So, what's the kingdom of God? Are we talking about I'm not going to get into heaven? Well, no, he says here, such as... And such were some of you. So you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified, right? Which means we have to we have to repent, right, of those things that we did. But we don't continue in that thing. And I think that's where some of us are getting it twisted, right? So I'm not trying to veer too much off the topic, but my thing is 
this, you know, what is casual sex? It's sex outside of marriage. It's sex outside of a committed relationship, right? But you're single till married. And married, that's, that's the legalities of it. But when you lay down with somebody, you're, now we can talk about the science of this thing. You know, this is it's supposed to be sacred. The spirituality of this thing, right? Because it's a whole nother realm that we cannot see you know this body is just flesh but what what lives in here is our soul and our spirit so when we connect with somebody sexually our spirits are intertwining right our souls are intertwining and that's where we get this whole uh you hear about the soul ties and then like when you break up or you get a divorce or you know you you sleep with multiple people these are spirits and that's why i said that casual sex is killing us right again not we're not just talking about stds we're not just talking about um unplanned pregnancies the stds and the unplanned pregnancies are more so the manifestation of that connection that spirit is, is that making any kind of sense you know i don't want to get too far off on the deep end um but you know, you you lay down with somebody, you take on their energy. So if that person was depressed, <clears throat> even if you just around them, living with them, but we talking about you actually having sex with them, sleeping with them, now you depressed. Or we can just take it on the flip side. This person is, you know, he's a businessman and very motivated and, you know, high energy type of guy, you know, got that high sex drive and the energy to go with it because he's all about making that money. You lay, lay down with a man like that, you best believe you're going to wake up like, yes, <laughs> I am ready to take over the world and get my business going. Like, like it's deep. It's really deep, y'all. Um, What else can I say about this thing? I really want to go somewhere else with this, but I hope I'm making my point. And, you know, just like when it comes to dating, like, just that sacredness of, sex is just like like i said they, they told us when we were younger like okay don't do it but okay when you're a young woman or a young man a young person and you're engaging in these casual you know sex type of relationships <clears throat> it might be fun for a little while right but you're you're still your brain is still developing what they say we're not even fully an adult develop a brain until uh after 25 or the age of 25 right so like that first breakup is always the worst you know um whether you had sex with them or not but if you had sex with them it, it's, it's even worse it's harder uh to recover because you know if somebody don't call you the next day that's that's tra that's traumatizing that's traumatic you like wait a minute you're supposed to call me you know and then you could be connecting with people who you know could have came from a, a single parent home or a divorced home. I came from a, uh, my parents were divorced by the time I was like 10 or 11. And and it, and it may not have affected me, you know, when I was young, but a lot of times people that come out of those um, divorced homes grow up with like an abandonment type issue. So it's like, why every time I, I get into these relationships, the person leaves me because now I'm carrying this abandonment right i mean these are things these are things that come from um from therapy you know and that's why therapy is always recommended you know if you've been through some things right and they said some you know some people go to therapy for years but then too uh for what has always helped me in the past to heal from things is i was standing the word i was praying you know going to church and it's like when we're not keeping God first, that's when we start to fall, right? Like seriously. And and I don't know how long any of us can go saying, you know, I love God, I love God, but then I still do the things that hurt me, the things I don't want to do. And you know, we're covered by his grace. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace, but it just it's insanity it, it makes no sense to keep doing something that's gonna make you sick right and uh 
it's something in in men, right? And some women too, but <laughs> we give men a lot of um we're we're wired differently than men. And so I had a good analogy about like um and I've never been married, so I can't say, you know, about, I can't really speak on, like, if somebody cheats on you. But we can, we, I can speak from just, like, say you're, say you're dating three people casually, not necessarily having sex with them. But it's kind of like, um, like, how do you find your person? Like, so one of my, my favorite ice cream is actually Ben and Jerry's. It's a uh, Cherry Garcia, so it's like a cherry ice cream with fudge flakes and, and cherries in it. So say that's my favorite, but I love sweets and let's say I love ice cream. So it's like, it's three different ice creams, right? You got the Cherry Garcia, you got the cookies and cream, and you got the um vanilla, right? And I like all of it. But that Cherry Garcia is my favorite, right? So that's that's how it goes. You know, you, 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 know, you could be, <laughs> a man could be dating you and he got a, a healthy appetite for women, you know, or a lust appetite, right? So you his favorite, but that don't mean he don't want to eat some vanilla sometimes. That don't mean he want to, uh, he don't want some cookies and creams sometimes, right? <laughs> That's probably not the best analogy, but just trying to make some sense of this thing. But too much of any of that stuff would make us sick, right? And I wouldn't want to eat all those things at one time. <laughs> but, um, yeah, too much sugar is bad for you. So that's a pretty good analogy. Everything in moderation. But I just think that the society that we're living in now has just really devalued and degraded something that was meant to be sacred, right? Something that was meant to be between man and woman. Uh, something that was supposed to be for procreation, right? And so <clears throat> I was just like, I'm over it. You know, this is probably not the best time for me to not have sex because I've been pretty candid about, you know, um, my uh, my fertility. You know, I'm, I'm over 40. So my chances are getting lower. And I always said, well, I should be dating somebody who either he already has kids or he doesn't have kids but he wants kids right because you got some guys that's my age or older who don't have kids don't want kids they feel like they're too old one guy told me i was too old but i'm not listening to that right i'm not listening to that <laughs> but um i'm just saying but i also wanted to tell you all about um this marriage fast I don't know if you heard of Tiffany Montgomery. Her ministry is called Covered by God. And um, the marriage fast is every Tuesday for the rest of this year from 6 uh, a.m. to 3 p.m. Water only. Um, I actually participated in it last week. And, um, you know, it's like, how can I sit up here and pray, praying and fasting, asking God for the husband, but then I'm still doing what God said not to do, Okay. So we got to we got to be real with ourselves. You know, if I truly believe that God is who he says he is, then that means that he's going to bring that desire to pass. Right. But it's a, some spiritual elements to this thing. Right. And to have something different, you got to do something different. And what's going to bring about that healing? What's going to break those addictions is praying, fasting and being in the word of God. So I hope that this message helps somebody. Um, pass it on. You know, if, if you can let me know what you think about uh, casual sex relationships, sex outside of marriage. Um, it's not too much that I'm not afraid to speak about. <clears throat> I've seen a lot, been through a lot in what these last couple of decades of my life. <laughs> Um, sometimes I try to censor what I speak about just because, you know, uh, my family, but if it's something that's gonna free me and other people around me, then it's obviously something that needs to be shared. And, um, I just know I, like I pray before I got on here, you know, um, I don't know, like 
just want to be delivered from the heartache and the pain. And we know that Jesus is the only one who can really heal us from that, right? And we got to do our part too, though. You can't be saying, Lord, heal me, but then you, you know, uh, or I want to always use the, the analogy, I want to lose weight, but I but I got a pack of cookies stashed in the, in the house. So I want to stop drinking, but I got all this, you know, wine in the house. Like for me, the, I try not to like keep, uh, like a big old pack of cookies. There's one person that live here, right? <laughs> and I sit there and eat them things until they're gone. You know, so um, I just think this is a very serious topic. Uh, and, you know, my prayer and desire is for the people who genuinely want to be married, um, you know, that God will align them with people who want to be married, right? That's all I'm saying. You know, don't, you know, waste any more time with somebody who their intentions are just, they want to just have sex with you, <laughs> right? Like it's a sport or like you, you, you just a body, you know? I had a guy tell me, you know, um, I like you, you know, we have a good time together, you know, but I don't want no more kids. I'm like, thank you for telling me that. <laughs> You know, I might make a good, I, I, I think I'll make a good stepmama, but I at least want to try to have one of my own, you know, and God knows that, right? Well, I think I'm done with this message. It has gone on a little long, a little bit longer than I anticipated, but um, I had another scripture I wanted to refer to. I'm not trying to scare anybody, but it's like when, when we were younger, <clears throat> I guess the scripture wasn't enough, you know, about not you know about being a fornicator <laughs> that didn't scare nobody right it might have scared some people that's probably why some people got married young you know because also what paul says um in second uh first corinthians i think i have it um highlighted in my my other bible he says uh he, he 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 basically telling you <laughs> to remain as you are if you can't control yourself and he was saying if you can't control yourself then go on and get married right <laughs> okay but that ain't no good reason to get married for just for some sex no <laughs> never no it's got to be a purpose you know it's got to be your your your, your mate your helpmate y'all got to be coming together to work on something Something for God's glory, not just let me hurry up and go get a husband so that I'm not a, a fornicator because <laughs> I don't want to go to, to hell. <laughs> right. But he said here, um, he, he gives a lot of, you know, advice to the unmarried and widowed. And anyway, y'all can read it for yourself. If you're familiar with the scripture, go back and read it again. Right. But, um. This is where I want my pastor friends to talk to us and tell us. Okay, so he said, this is uh, Revelations, right? You know, Revelations. <laughs> People get scared when you start reading Revelations. But it says here uh, in verse uh, 21 and 8, it says, But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, uh, murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. I said, oh, Lord Jesus. We're going to hell. <laughs> I don't want to go to hell. But basically what Paul said was, um, remain as you are, single, but being chased, being celibate, you know? But you know, there are people who don't have sexual desires. And so I just pray that everybody finds their their compatible mates, right? When it comes to that thing. You want to marry your friend, you know? Uh, and there's one more scripture here where it talks again. Where it's like they keep bringing up this sexual, you know, immorality thing. And we automatically think they talking about sex outside of marriage. They talking about sex with um, uh, 
they talking about adulterers. They talking about sex bestiality. They talking about uh, incest, right? Okay. And so this is again talking about you know um, the new heaven and the new earth. And so uh, chapter twenty two and verse fifth twenty four. I mean, I'm sorry, twenty Revelations twenty two and fourteen says, "Blessed are those who wash." their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life and that they may enter the city by the gates outside are the dogs and sorcerers that's a whole nother topic tarot and all that right and the sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and everyone who loves and practices falsehood so this is my heavy message for today um let me know what you think. And uh I just have to have to post what's what's on my heart, you know. Um what God gives me and I pray that it's fruitful. Um, not only for me, but for those who have been keeping up with me all this time. Thank you. <laughs> I just know I'm tired, right? Tired of feeling like used, you know, confused. And it's just time out. And that was another thing I prayed. I'm like, you know, God, just it's just grow us up. You know, grow us up. Because I know I don't want to be, you know, 40. I mean, I'm already over 40. But I'm saying you don't want to be 40, 50, 60 and die alone or live alone. You know, unless your your husband or your spouse uh, dies, you know. So, And again, it works out different for different people. But you got to pray for discernment. You have to know your worth, you know, because if you listen to all of this, what's, what's out there on social media talking about women over 40 and the Kevin Samuels and all of that, <coughs> it will have you depressed thinking it's over for me. It's never going to happen for me, you know. And that's not how God, that's not, that's not from God. That's not how God operates, right? He going to give us a testimony. And so, um, but yeah, if you want to participate in that fast, um, it's actually called the year of the bride fast. So I will probably, uh, hashtag that when I'm finished. Uh, once I post this video, it'll be definitely on YouTube cause it's too long for Instagram. It'll be on uh, my Dr. Ray um, Facebook page as well. But I know I want something different in my life. And so to have something different, you got to do something different. You know, just I, I'm like, I be telling my friends, just want something normal. You know, what, what happened to the good old days? You know, we, we don't have landlines no more. But and I know we not in high school. We not 16. We not 20. But when guys used to have to call you on your mama phone, or I had my own phone line, or, um, okay, that's high school, you know, but even in college, you know, we had landlines that would call you on the phone, and you could sit up and just talk and just really get to know people. And now it's like we so busy, we so connected with instant communication that we're disconnected, right? It takes a lot of, and then as an, as you're adulting, you have more responsibilities. Like, I don't have kids and stuff, but I have a job. I have my, my own uh, household to keep, right? <laughs> keep myself together. And uh, I have I have parents who are older who I help, you know, them with whatever they need. And it's like, it just takes a lot of energy to date. But it's like when you really into somebody, you make that time, Right. You, you send those little text messages back and forth and maybe even some sexting. And that's another topic because when you're doing that sexting, that's actually um, putting that in your spirit. So it's like you're going to wind up having sex with that person, <laughs> you know, because they get to where they fantasizing or you fantasizing, you know, masturbation, pornography, all of that stuff, y'all. Like it's, it's, it's spiritual, you understand? I hope that makes sense what I'm saying. But I love you guys. Let me know what you think of this content. Um, it's just time to grow up and move forward and do this thing the way that God intended for it to be. Y'all have a good night and happy Sunday.